Hello and welcome to the third lesson in the Structures and Forces Unit for Science 7. Uh, this lesson we're going to look at the basic forms for structures and there are three basic forms that we're going to take a look at. Okay, So what are we covering today? We're recognizing and classifying structural forms and materials used in construction. We are describing and comparing examples of structures developed by different cultures at different times. That's continuing from the last lesson. And we're going to describe and interpret natural structures, including the structure of living things and structures created by animals, and how those are also classified as structural forms. So today's structure is a, another famous one that you probably will be aware of. Uh, this is Stonehenge. Uh, Stonehenge was built in different stages between 3000 BC and 1600 BC, and there are a wide variety of theories about why it was built and what it, it was designed to do. These days, it's associated with Druidism, uh, Paganism, and New Age philosophy. So different cultures and different uh, religions viewed by some others in the world. Some have suggested that the monument is famous for its orientation in relation to the rising and the setting sun. And it was a temple used to worship ancient earth deities or gods. So let's take a look at where exactly Stonehenge is. So let's go to our friends Google Earth. And here is where we are, our building once again. And we're going to fly again halfway across the world here. Probably a seven or eight hour flight to a remote area in England, I think I can call it. Uh, there is Stonehenge from aerial view quite high up. And as we zoom in, you get to see more of the individual structures and characteristics of those stones and how they're actually laid out. Now obviously being as old as it is, many of the stones are, are fallen or may not be in the original place, but we get a really good idea of what it possibly looked like in the year 3000 BC. So let's examine some of nature's structures first. Okay, This being a very popular and common structure, the spider web. You can see that it's been uh, laced with dew, morning dew, all the little drops of water. Now, this structure is incredibly strong. You and I can walk through it and basically destroy it in a matter of seconds, and it's taken this small creature hours to build, but it's incredibly strong for what it's made out of. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but a spider's web can hold up to 4,000 times the weight of the spider that made it. If you were a spider, how much weight would your web be able to hold? So we see different structures in different forms, and like the spider's web, man-made and natural structures normally take one of three basic shapes or forms. These basic shapes are the solid structures, the frame structures, and the shell structures. So we're going to go take a look at each one of these structures and what exactly they look like. So first we'll start with solid structures. This type of structure is formed from a solid piece or combination of pieces of some strong material. Now these structures are usually stronger than frame or shell structures, but are more massive and harder to move. These uh, uh, barriers that we see along um, highways and bridges, these concrete dividers, are an example of a solid structure. It is solid concrete. There's usually nothing inside except rebar, no hollowness in those. So what are some other solid structures? Well, the pyramids, as we mentioned before, those are solid structures. There I am at the Great Wall of China. The wall itself is a solid structure. Roots are solid structures and trees as well. They do have tubes that run in them, I, I understand that, but the, the basics of them, they are strong, solid form. The, the trunk of the tree as well could, could be considered a solid form. So if we're gonna look at some man-made examples, they would include a hockey puck, the Great Pyramids, Wall of China, the PEI Confederation Bridge would also be another example of a man-made structure that is a solid structure. And some natural examples, like I said, the tree trunk, the human brain, another great example of a natural solid structure. Now, when we build solid structures like walls, do they fail or how do they fail? Well, first of all, wall can be not heavy enough. Whatever it's supporting on one side can essentially just push it over. Uh, that's not a very solid wall. It can be too heavy and actually sink in different parts. We see that sometimes when we see uh, uh, garden walls built, we see unevenness along the top, and that's over time, parts of the wall has sunk. The ground could be unstable and the wall could be too heavy. The wall may not be thick enough or fastened together. If the wall is not thick enough or fastened together properly, that allows for whatever is holding it or 
pushing on one side to possibly cause wall collapse. And the structure may not be anchored to the ground, causing it to tip. Uh, if you've ever tried to build a really high wall just simply out of snow, let's say, or, and then uh, you'll know that when you get to a certain height, it begins to be wobbly on the top. It's not properly anchored and has to uh, find its way back to the ground. Frame structures. What are frame structures? This structure is made up of parts attached together to make a frame for another material to be attached to. The skeletal system is a perfect example of a frame structure. These structures are lighter and use less materials. So what are some other frame examples? Well, we looked at the spider's web. That's a great frame example. A bus shelter would be a frame because it's framed up and put glass glasses put on top of it. A beehive is a frame structure. And the famous Eiffel Tower is a frame structure. So again, listing those again. Uh, swing set, the Greek Parthenon is another example. The Eiffel Tower, an Empire State Building is obviously a good example because it's frames. It's a frame structure made of steel that has stuff put on top of it. And like I said, the bus shelter earlier. And a spider web, a honeycomb, and like the dinosaur skeleton that we saw, all good examples of a frame structure. Now, what are some uh, issues with some frame structures? Well, certain kinds of frame structures present special design challenges. Uh, sometimes these structures need some type of anchor to hold them down. We see that with very tall towers like these uh, radio towers. Uh, these signal or radio towers can be unstable if they're not braced properly. So that's important to remember about certain frame structures that the taller they get, they may need bracing. Lastly is the shell structure. Shell structures have a solid outer surface, which may be rounded or flat in shape and have a hollow inner area. Now these structures often lighter than solid structures are often stronger than frame structures. You kind of get the best of both worlds there. An example would be this dome at the China National Center for the Performing Arts. Very unique structure, but it's certainly a uh, framed outer shell, but it's hollow on the inside. Some examples include, again, the Bird's Nest Stadium in China. This would be a great example of a shell. The Saddle Dome, Go Flames Go, where we have a shell structure, and even an airplane would be considered a shell structure. So what are those? Some of those again, Saddle Dome, Chinese National Stadium, or the Bird's Nest, an airplane, or a car. And a snail shell is a good example of a shell structure. A turtle shell or an egg would be natural examples of shell structures. Now, constructing strong shell structures can be tricky and builders face problems like tiny weaknesses or scratches can weaken the whole shell structure. Think of a glass jar if there's a crack or even an egg in a egg or glass jar. It weakens the rest of the shell and can cause it to collapse. Flat materials are not easily rounded. If you've ever tried to round a piece of plywood to go into a shell or an arch, that gets to be very tricky. And there are tricks of the trade to uh, round hard materials like that. And assembling a shell can be very, very tricky. It takes a lot of time and a lot of planning and a lot of engineering to build that. So those are the three structural forms. And to quickly review on those once again, that is the solid structure, the frame structure, and the shell structure. And we can kind of see those throughout the world when we take a glance at uh, different structures that have been built. And that's all for today.